welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be diving into our pumpkins that we have. We have two pie pumpkins here that I have wanted to create some freeze-dried goodies with. If you checked out our last video, I talked about some aspirations and goals that I had in regards to taking these pumpkins and making an easy on the go pumpkin spice cube for coffee. Now, I'm not sure how that will turn out today, if we'll get to do and create all the things that are in my mind, but in up here, it is coming together quite well, but we need to get it to here. So our first step to getting there is to cut our pie pumpkins in half and bake them. And I'm gonna start at 350 degrees for 45 minutes, and we will check the doneness to see how they go but this is a multi-step process and we will try to make it go as quickly as possible. So follow along to see how everything turns out in today's video for our pumpkin baking and freeze dry cycle. Go ahead and try our second one. Hopefully it'll be a little bit easier to cut into than the first one. Okay. There we go. It's a beautiful pumpkin inside. All right, now we'll go ahead and put these on our cookie tray and start baking. check and see where our pumpkins are and finish. Pretty soft there. Parts are rock here. I'm beginning to think that that smaller pumpkin, the first one that we tried to get into, is just not maybe ripe enough, but maybe the inside is done and the skin is just really tough. So we can, I mean, easily see how these are flattening. So we'll at least get these scooped out, and if these aren't done, we'll go ahead and just put them back in and see if we can do any salvaging to see how it goes. The skin just basically peels right off, which is quite nice. Even though the outside is not done, it actually makes it so much easier to scoop out because the skin isn't like hot and just collapsing. So kind of a nice feature. I'm going to use this to mix it all up to just make sure there's no large pieces. It won't get it completely smooth, but it will do the trick. And it looks pretty good. Let's see. There you go. We'll let this cool a little bit and then come back to it to add in our other ingredients. So I'm measuring out about a cup and a half of puree here. This is a rough amount, but the leftover will just be kept as pureed pumpkin to use for pies or whatever. Approximately 12 to 15 teaspoons of spices in here between cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice, ginger, and cloves because we're trying to create a concentrated version of um, this puree for pumpkin spice. Now we'll be adding in 7 teaspoons of vanilla extract. If you watched our video about the duck eggs, you'll recognize these containers. So we're going to take what we have here and put it into these compartments. It's actually pretty easy to handle. And 
we'll just top them off as we fill them up. So I'm going to take our scraper and try to get them as squished in as possible. Remember, this is a concentrated version of what you would use to make a latte yourself if you were following a recipe at home. And I just kind of did some fast searches on if you wanted to make your own, what you would need to do that. Usually it was approximately two tablespoons of pumpkin puree. And when I did a pre-measurement, these held just under that. So um, since it's an experiment, I did not want to do too much of it in case it wasn't something that turned out quite the way I hoped. But we will see. And this is it's looking pretty good. So we've got them all to fit into this one container, which is perfectly fine. And um, these will go into the freezer to freeze into their individual little cubes. We'll pop them out to put them on the freeze dryer tray to um, add to our cycle that we'll be running here. Now we'll go ahead and place these into the freezer. With the remaining pumpkin, we're going to place it on this tray. I did get out our scale because I'm interested to see what this weighs as we go through the stages of it being in a pureed form before it's freeze dried versus after. So we will go ahead and figure that part out. There are 631 grams of pureed pumpkin on the tray, so we'll go ahead and spread it out a little bit more even so it freeze dries easily. I've got this spread out pretty evenly on here, and I'm going to put some divots in and just helps to kind of penetrate that. And I have a small section here to add other items on for our freeze drying if I need it. Our tray is ready to go in the freezer until our cycle starts. Well, our pumpkin preparation is all done and our items are in the freezer. We'll have to wait for them to completely freeze. So more than likely our cycle will be starting tomorrow since it is so late now, but that's okay. And the next time you check in, we will be downstairs with the freeze dryer. Well, we're back down with the freeze dryer and it's the next day. Our pumpkin is frozen along with all of the other items that we're going to be putting in for today's cycle. So I look forward to showing you those here. First, we'll move over to the freeze dryer to start that cool down process and I'll bring all the food down. While our freeze dryer is in its cool down process, I will go ahead and show you the food that we have going in for today's cycle. And in a different method, I'm just gonna stand here and show you each tray. Our first tray going in is diced onions and diced tomatoes. And um, these are things that we received from our CSA and just wanting to make them last a little bit longer. This is how we're going to be doing it. My hope is to take a portion of these diced onions and hopefully do some onion powder. So that would be crushing them into a powder just as you would have as a regular seasoning in your cabinet. But I might look a little bit more into that before we decide to move forward with it. And if not, we would just be probably putting them in mylar bags for longer term storage since we haven't done a lot of things vegetable wise like that. The next tray we have is chicken noodle soup nice frozen block of it here and it was so good and of course as it being the start of soup season we are starting it with a bang with our potato leek in our last video and now chicken noodle it was delicious and i feel really good about it we made this from scratch completely from the chicken that was from a local farmhouse that we get we know exactly what they eat and who processed and handled them. The vegetables are from the CSA that we get. The herbs also from the CSA, but freeze dried by us. So this could not be any more real food as it gets unless we had uh, harvested that chicken ourselves. But I am very happy with how it turned out. It's delicious and can't, cannot wait to freeze dry it and re-experience it all over again. Our next tray will look familiar, our pumpkin tray. It smells so good. I don't know. Oh, it smells like the beginning of pumpkin pie, but also what smells even better is our cubes of pumpkin spice 
creation for pumpkin spice lattes. Oh my gosh, they smell delicious and it's going to smell even better when these are processing in the freeze dryer because you get that warmth for drying and it's going to... I can't get enough. It's going to be so good. The thing that I'd like to point out is in that recipe, it did call for sugar to be added to this, whether that be brown sugar, granulated sugar, maple sugar, uh, maple syrup, whatever your preference is. I did not put sugar in this because based on it being a brand new recipe, I'm not sure how sweet we're going to want something. So whatever we choose to use, usually it is maple syrup when it comes to coffee. Um, we will add it at the time we're making it. So these will just be all the spices and the vanilla and the pumpkin. But really looking forward to seeing how that turns out. And like I said with the pumpkin, my hope is to grind that up and use it for pie making hopefully. But a myriad of other things, pumpkin bread, um, muffins, obviously any kind of baked good would be delicious. Something like this would be incredible for your animals. If you have a dog, a lot of times pumpkin can help settle an animal's stomach in regards to indigestion or just whatever their need is. And this could be a fabulous way to add it to the top of their food when it comes time to feed them. Our last tray is our most unique one I think that we've done so far in diving into a whole new realm of raw meat. And um, I'm a little nervous about it, but obviously I've seen other people do it, so it should work out pretty well. But it is raw liver. And I'm not a big liver fan, but I'm hoping that this way might have a easier use for us in different methods. So I do plan on making a video about where we are going to take this in the next level of completion. So. Um, stick around to see that and if you haven't subscribed and you look forward to that video Please subscribe now and you'll be notified when that video is set to post or premiere and um, I just know that it will be a great benefit for us And if you are following along because you also have a freeze dryer and are looking for ways to incorporate Lots of nutritional value without maybe all the flavor that you don't like this could be an amazing opportunity of learning for you out there and in addition on that tray we have three of our pumpkin spice cubes because they didn't all fit so we'll move over to the freeze dryer to put all of this in and start our cycle one last delicious smell before it goes in We'll close our drain valve and press continue. The cycle has started and that pre-chill that we allowed the freezer to have for 15 minutes brought it down 40 degrees. So pretty cool how quickly that happens. Obviously it is a small space, but it is a feature that is probably necessary as in our case, putting in those frozen trays you want it to go into a cold environment and it's already dropping pretty quickly. As I've said in other videos, it is a very, very easy piece of equipment and process to use as usual. Anything can have its issues. In our video where I did a defrost on the machine um, instead of doing a natural defrost, we had some hiccups with some water leakage and Ultimately, it still was not my favorite way to use the freezer, but if you were somebody wanting to use this back to back, it is something that you would need to do. Unless you had a heater outside of your freeze dryer pointed at it, natural defrost to me is the way to go. And in this case, we are actually doing um, many cycles in the same week this week. So it's turning out well and it's not even like hot outside so it's defrosting very well on its own and that line is cleared which is always my main concern. So we will check back with our food tomorrow and here is hoping that when we finally get into it tomorrow that it, everything is nice and dry and ready to be packaged up. 
it's been quite a while since we checked in and I kept an eye on the freeze dryer all day yesterday in hopes that it would complete its cycle, but it had other plans. I checked it late last night, still not done. Brad checked it at three o'clock in the morning for us this morning, still not done. So somewhere between then and waking up, it completed its cycle on its own at 39 hours. And I added on a few more hours, about three to that to make it work with our schedule. So there is a ton of ice buildup and our food looks very shrunken and small. So here's hoping that is a good sign that everything is done and we don't need to continue our cycle past this, but we are learning, but I have tried to stick to the guidelines that the freeze dryer is designed for of keeping things um, small and thin and um, not too crowded but we will find out. We'll open up that drain valve and pull our food out to see if it's hopefully done. It's nice and cold in there at three degrees Fahrenheit, but we'll release the pressure and pull our food out and start our next step. Our pumpkin is beautiful. It's got this amazing sheen on it. It looks shiny like it's wet, but it's it's very hard. So that is amazing. And our pumpkin spice latte cubes look and smell delicious. So this is pretty exciting. And um, at first touch, everything feels really good. And we will continue probably how we did last time by doing a visual check, putting everything back in to verify um, until we're packaging it individually. <clears throat> it's making this little crispy sound, but next is our onions and tomatoes. They look great and um, they feel great too, which is of course an important factor. Nice and light, they move around. So we will put these back in and check our next item, but it smells like fresh chopped ingredients for your next recipe. Our next item is our chicken noodle soup. And if you can tell, there's quite a bit of shrinkage there on the ends and around the sides. It's, I don't want to tip it over too much, but this was probably a culprit of a long amount of time for drying, but it looks great. It doesn't really smell like anything because I'm sure all that moisture really locks in the flavor before it's taken out. So this of course is something that I do want to confirm is completely moisture free as it is a solid piece and the biggest portion of something that we have in our cycle today. So it looks great. Those pieces of chicken are nice and crisp, but we'll take a further look as we go to package. And our last tray of delicious raw liver, but it does look very good. It looks nice and dry and brittle, and that's exactly what we're hoping for, for the steps that I have for this in the future and our remaining pumpkin spice latte cubes. So I'm not sure what we'll start with, probably the onions and tomatoes, but we'll move over to packaging. I went ahead and pulled out all the bags I'm hoping that we will be using for this packaging and a marker to remember to label the bags before we package it. it makes it so much easier. We're going to go ahead and start with our onions and tomatoes. It smells so good like I said and I hope to do some further things with these other than just adding them to recipes just trying to think of ways to incorporate them. Like I said with the onions, I would love to take some and crush them into onion powder and see how well that works. Obviously my biggest concern is finding a container that they can stay in that keeps them fresh when you're opening and closing it often. So whether that's finding a smaller version of an oxygen absorber to keep in there or just doing a little at a time. I'm not really sure how well that works, but We'll start to packaging. Don't want to waste any time. We'll label our first two bags before we put everything in there. As I'm going through, everything feels really dry. No cold spots, so that's good. 
other thoughts for tomatoes that you probably could do would be crushing it and making it into a paste of just adding a little bit of water at a time until you get that uh, thickness and consistency that you're looking for. So our tomatoes are in here and it's pretty full bag. So we'll go ahead and set that up here until we get our onions packaged up. Now that we have a little bit more space, I wanted to try to do a sweeping method with this. It works pretty well. Everything feels good. All right, so we got our onions in there. There wasn't quite as much as the tomatoes, but that's all right. And we will start our packaging. Our impulse sealer here is already at a seven and eight, as I usually do, always going to press it down at twice in two spots above and below the notch. Just like to get that double A-OK -okay feeling that they are sealed. Looks good. Two spots. Also looks good. So first tray down and we'll move right along to our next items that we're going to do. We'll do our delicious smelling pumpkin next. I mean, it's like, it smells like a bakery. It smells so good. I hope that my idea of the pumpkin spice cube works out and has a great taste, but we'll find out soon. One nice, beautiful brick and it's too bright in here to see, but from my side, I can see through in spots that are thinner from where we did those divots. So this is pretty cool. It just has such a beautiful shine. It's probably not gonna capture it because it's too bright with the light, but it just looks fake, almost like styrofoam. It's, it's beautiful. I may have made an error with trying to do this in the small bag, but I am going to break our pumpkin into some pieces and hope that that works a little bit. Obviously that also allows me to feel the inside breaking point to, to really see how thin that is and make sure that there are no cool spots and we're feeling pretty good. Of course it's okay if this gets smushed in there because it is designed in my mind to be a puree for baking with so that's not going to matter when it comes to doing the pumpkin spice cubes i'm hoping to keep them in their nice cube form and being kind of delicate with them we have all of our pumpkin puree in there and we'll set that to the side while we get our bag for our cubes now i won't seal this one right away because we still have cubes on our other tray in there and we want to get those out and not forget so i'm just going to slide these down in there get our tray out of the way to get our next one out and we'll do the liver and the final pumpkin spice cubes and package it all at once our final three cubes here and our liver i don't want this to hang out too much so we're going to get this labeled and these are just it's weird very, very thin, very brittle pieces here. Obviously our tray is going through a cold stage right now, so I just want to make sure that everything is complete. Everything feels, feels good. Part of me wants to try it, but part of me doesn't. So we'll just keep the packaging for the time being. Now, unlike all the other ones, when it comes to the liver, I am going to be adding in an oxygen absorber since that is raw meat and I do want to make sure that it stays safe that way. I am going to add one of those. Also, since I don't know when we'll be getting to do it, I want to make sure that it stays the way I want. So, oxygen absorber. And we will go ahead and seal this up. All good to go. I'm going to change this back to a four to five so we can seal up these oxygen absorbers and move on to our next item to package. Back 
to a seven and eight. I will say it is much easier when everything is going into my water bags. It's a lot faster from the things that I've packaged in the past of trying to keep it into good packaging, but you know, things you have to do to save and help the environment. All done, so our pumpkin spice cubes are in here now. Our pumpkin puree. It's a nice tight fit, but it would have been a waste to use a big bag. And seal. All right, since we know that we only have one item left, and that is our chicken noodle soup, we'll get that labeled. Here it is, our chicken noodle soup. And this by far is the one that I'm most anxious about to make sure it's done since it was the whole tray, as you can definitely see. And feels pretty good coming up in a single layer. I'm trying not to break it. I'm also trying to feel underneath of it just to make sure it doesn't feel cold because it's still has moisture. There's a difference between the tray being cold because it is ice cold at negative five degrees that just came out versus it's still being cold and it feels good. We're going to get our bag out and then do it in pieces and that obviously also makes it easier to feel it when it breaks apart. So there's one good chunk there. I'll probably do it into like six a little bit. We'll just break it into smaller from there. You can kind of see carrots and the vegetables in there. Feels good. There's a thicker spot. I do want to make sure that we're good there. Feels good. Next section is the dead center and that always can be a culprit because it's right in the middle but feels good. You can see that orzo in there a little bit. It almost looks like it's sealed in glass. Feels good. I am happy to say we had a hundred percent completion. I feel like it's been forever since we've had that on a first try, but it goes to show you that following the suggestions of the of the product is going to give you a good outcome. I think we got as many little bits of morsels that we can out of here. I'm going to crush this down a little bit and also turn off the system since we are all complete and completely moisture free. Method to crushing something down and keeping it in the bag is to kind of just get that top and do a little bit of rolling. And you can hear it getting smaller. Just how we want it. That gives us a little bit more space at the top where it was almost right up to that notch, which would not have provided enough room. So now we can package it up. And we're all done. It definitely looks like a Harvest Right advertisement here with all of our Mylar bags of packaged food, but it is a fast and effective way of getting the job done, and that's what we were looking for since our other go-to was just not available today. But um, they are helpful for your long-term storage. Now, that might not be the case for all of this, but it was for the soup, and that was my intention to do that soup today for adding it to our long-term storage with our other items that we have. When it comes to the puree and the pumpkin spice cubes, they were going to be used within the next month or two, and you know, at this point, it was just best to put them in there instead of trying to put them in plastic bags that just is not going to be effective and to make sure that it's not a wasted product we want to keep them as dry as possible 
and our tomatoes and onions although they could be used very soon i might just leave them for long-term storage since we don't have a lot of vegetable type items down here for that already mostly it's fruit and other um, meal based items so that could be a good addition or something that we kind of experiment with like i said with onion powder or tomato paste the one that i'm most excited about is the liver now as i've said before i've looked at ways to get that into our diet. It is such a nutrient packed food that has such a unique flavor, but when it comes down to it, my idea that I have settled on as long as everything has turned out well is to create a capsule of the crushed liver. So to do a supplement capsule. And I'll be doing a video on that of a step-by-step -step guide of how that process goes. So if that's something that interests you and that this video is content that you enjoy, please consider subscribing to our channel and you'll be notified when future videos are set to premiere our post. In the meantime, I hope that you are doing well and we look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye!